All right, thanks for watching. And yes, you've heard that right, because today I will show that every function is continuous, provided that you use what's called a discrete metric. So let S be any set, and consider the following metric. So dxy, so it shows a distance that says, well, either the points are the same, in which case the distance is zero, or the points are not the same, in which case they're exactly one apart. So think, for instance, an equilateral triangle with side one. Then in that case, yes, different points are exactly one apart. Except it's super freaky. You do it with any set. So even in the real numbers, you just say that points are exactly one apart. So here the distance is one, here the distance is one, everywhere the distance is one. And here's what I want to show, namely, if you consider SD, where D is the discrete metric, and any other space with any other metric, S prime, D prime, so any metric, then any function from S to S prime is continuous. Then any F from S to S prime is continuous. And how do we show this? Well, uh, just very quickly with epsilon and delta, so I show that F is continuous at uh, x naught for any x naught. Then let epsilon be given. And the point is, just consider balls with radius one half. So let delta be one half, which is positive. Then the point is, then for all x, if x minus x naught is less than delta, which is one half, then what does that mean for points to be one half away? Well, it means that they're not one away. So in particular, this implies x minus x naught is less than one. Well, and the only way points could be at most one away, but not one away is if they're the same. So in particular, this implies x equals x naught. Because remember, the discrete metric only has two values. It's either zero if they're the same, or one if they're not the same. So if it's less than one, it must be in this case. But then, what is the difference f of x minus f of x naught? Well, if they're the same, that is just f of x naught minus f of x naught. And that's zero, which is less than epsilon. So f is continuous. Awesome, huh? On the other hand, what if you have the opposite scenario? What if you consider now SD to be any metric space and S prime D prime, like R2 D2, to be a metric space with a discrete metric? Then I want to show that in fact no functions are continuous. Of course not, because like uh, constant functions are continuous. But I want to show that if f from s to s prime is continuous, then, well, it's not necessarily constant. Because you could have, let's say, two pieces where f is constant on each piece. But what I want to show is that f is locally constant. And what I mean by locally constant is simply for any x naught, you can find some neighborhood okay, such that f is constant on that neighborhood. So there's just some small wiggle room around x naught where f is constant on that wiggle room. So in other words, for all delta, so in other words, for all x naught, 
there is some delta positive such that um, f is identically equal to f of x naught on the ball centered at x naught and radius delta. And in fact, for the real numbers, this just implies that f is constant. Because essentially, let's say f is constant on this neighborhood, well then, you can choose a point here, you can extend it, choose a point here, you can extend it, and similarly here, and essentially you get f is constant everywhere. However, in general, you can just say locally constant, because let's say your uh, space could have two pieces with two different values. Um. All right, and well, let's show this. Well, it shows the epsilon delta definition, but this time with epsilon equals one half. So since f is continuous, let's say at x naught, with epsilon equals one half, get uh, that uh, there is delta such that for all x, uh, the distance between x and x naught is less than delta implies that the discrete distance between f of x and f of x naught is less than one half. But the point is, one half is less than one. And the only way the discrete metric could be less than one is if f of x equals to f of x naught. So in other words, what have we shown? We've shown that if x is in the ball centered at x naught in radius delta, then f of x has to have the value f of x naught. So in that ball of radius delta, f of x must be f of x naught. And then we're done. Therefore, it's locally constant. Lastly, if you know topology, let me explain you what is going on, because it seems so weird. But basically, with the discrete metric, so fact, if you have, let's say, S and D with the discrete metric, then any subset of S is open. Then any E subset of S is open. And it's very easy to show because if you have a point X in E, well, the ball centered at X and radius one half is in E. Because if, again, X is in E, then the ball centered at X and radius one half well, it's just a point x, because the only points one half away at most from x is just x, and this is in E. So the ball is almost always included in E. Now, what is going on in the first case? So suppose you have f from, uh, what was it, the uh, discrete metric to any metric. Okay. Then... Remember the topological definition of continuity. It means the inverse image of any open set is open. So f continuous, that's the same thing as saying f inverse of u is open. In this case, open in S. And in this case, u is a subset of S prime that is open. But here's the thing. Um, in S, any set is open. So in particular, F inverse of U is open because it's trivially just a subset of S. And therefore, any function is continuous. So, and this holds for any function. From um, the, the discrete metric to any metric. So if you have any open subset here U, then f inverse of u might look here, like this. But it's a, a subset of s, and therefore, by definition, it is open here, because we're using the discrete metric. On the other hand, what about the other case, where you have s from any set to the discrete metric, then the point is that it is a bit harder. So with s prime with the discrete metric, 
Well, then what you need to show, you need to show that um, for any u open, f inverse of u is open. But here, this time, u is a subset of s prime. But remember, any subset of s prime is open because we here we're using the discrete metric here so basically what you would need to show that if f is continuous in the second case then for any subset f inverse of u is open and this is way harder to show you know because again for any subset the inverse is open but this could only happen if you're um locally constant or i guess if you also use a discrete metric on uh, s that might also work um, <laughs> So it's a kind of crazy dichotomy, which really shows that topology is kind of a crazy subject, okay? Because when, or when is every function continuous? That's not true in uh, at least single variable calculus. Uh, all right, I hope you like this extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.